We're starting off this Thursday, the 26th day of February, talking about, guess what, more snow showers and some potential flooding for some very obvious reasons. Thank you so much for tuning in and being with us on this evening, where we're still talking about Arctic temperatures tonight and for the, foresee for the near future, not for the foreseeable future, because we do have some relief in your forecast, not before some snow showers this afternoon, evening, and throughout the overnight. We can expect a few snow showers into the area this evening. Accumulations less than a half inch in most all areas. Arctic air, though, is going to pull in late tonight as well. Temperatures dropping into the single digits, well into the single digits, and that means slick spots. Roads that are wet can refreeze, and of course, just a flake or two is all it will take to make some course serious road conditions in the morning and of course no classes again tomorrow for most all of the viewing area as we just can't seem to get ahead maybe the first of next week snow is also however as i get into that a mixture of winter weather is possible monday night into tuesday morning the extended forecast does indicate the, the potential for a warm-up and a prolonged rainfall event on that note a widespread snowpack with that snow on the ground, equivalent to about an inch of liquid water across basically all of the viewing area in eastern Kentucky. And while some melting will occur between now and next week, there is still an expectancy of a significant snow cover on the ground still early next week. And a frontal boundary is expected to linger near the area for much of next week. And with that, repeated rounds of rain affecting our area. And that rain and that melting snow could, and we want to stress could at this point, lead to significant rises of streams and rivers next week. And right now the National Weather Service says with the potential, and we want to stress potential, for major flooding in some areas, the likelihood of which we haven't seen in a decade. A lot of coulds and possibles in there, I know, but that indeed will be uh, a far focal point, not just tomorrow night, but certainly the first of next week. Snow, flooding, and more. Arctic air. And temperatures which finally do hit the 50s as of Tuesday of next week. That's the one part we'll try to keep in mind. Okay, I said I was going to do it last night and the night before, and I failed. But I wanted to wait. We had more snow on the ground, so what better day to do it today? And while I would look forward to doing another contest of the like, I don't know, even myself who loves snow may be just about tired of it. So let's go back, and I think I have. And let me know if I missed one or two, but I have been very careful to make sure that I documented each and every one of them. A dozen of our snow contest participants tonight, uh, any and all ages it looks as though, all just great. And a couple, will have to say, are outstanding. And I think I've got one photograph. I know it was put in the mix when I asked some folks to come over and look at them and do the judging. So I know it was in there, but I can't find it on the DVD that I've got these pictures on for tonight. So with my apologies, but it was in there. And it was either Brianna Montgomery and Angela McKenz Angelica McKenzie, which I think that first one belonged to, or Noah Allen and his daddy Tyler Allen, which I think might be the one that's missing. I know that it was Justin Cantrell's there. I know that this was from Christina Marie Reeves, Timmy and, Timmy and Anthony and Christina over in Johnson County. I know I got one from Cody Bailey of Johnson County. I got one from Timmy. Timothy Bailey of Johnson County as well. This uh, next one after Timothy Bailey's, which is Timothy's here, was sent to me by Brenda Howard saying this was Dia's snowman. I got one, let's see, I got another one I believe from Abby Frisbee. I got, <laughs> that was a pretty cool one. I got another one uh, from Brenda Howard as well. This one I think was going to be Emma's snowman. There it is. <laughs> There's a little reindeer next to it. And then the last three that I received, uh, the next one was from, I think, Courtney Howard and Kayla Shepard. Uh, Cats fans will probably dig this one. And then I got one from Dalton Kuntz. And I think it's going to be pretty obvious where it came from. That's got to be Uncle Cy. And this large mountain of white work was submitted by Sabrina Crace and her family, who looks as though they had a nice time. That was the goal of the whole thing, to get kids out and in the snow playing and doing something that you don't see as much of as you used to. Video games, you know, have taken over the world. But when it came right down to it, the judges I asked to take a look at all these picks just couldn't decide between the Kentucky Wildcat fans and Uncle Si from Duck Dynasty. So we'll declare it a tie, and we'll say that Courtney Howard and Kayla Shepard for their UK 
and Dalton Kuntz for his uncle Cy. They all win blizzards and, an, and a blizzard cake. Send me a message on Facebook or email, guys. We'll tell you how to get your ice cream. Job well done for everyone. Thanks so much for participating. It was indeed a lot of fun. And, yeah, we'll be doing it again next snowfall. There has been some developments today in the case of John Montgomery versus Charles Doc Harden and the McGoffin County Board of Elections. We've been closely following, of course, the trial, and then since the trial, the ruling from Special Judge John David Preston, who deemed the office of McGoffin County Judge Executive vacant, and then basically threw out the election results for the November election for specifically McGoffin County Judge Executive. And with that, a lot of uncertainty and a lot of unknown as to when the position would be filled, by who, and how. The developments today include the filing of several documents in the circuit clerk's office, including some bonds on behalf of all of those parties involved, including one on behalf of Judge Harden, which seems to indicate that he will be able to retain his office, as was told by Judge Preston just a few days ago, pending an appeal, which he has also officially filed. To say there's been a lot of uncertainty surrounding the whole situation since declaring the office vacant is an understatement. You go to a different individual entity, mind you, you can get possibly a different answer. The facts are today that several individuals have filed paperwork related to the case, including John Montgomery himself, who has officially filed uh, a motion for a supersedious bond for the purpose of appeal indicating that he also may be filing another appeal himself, not just Charles Harden appealing the decision by Judge John David Preston, but it also indicates that John Montgomery, through his attorneys, will be filing an appeal on the matter as well, possibly still seeking, we can only assume, to have Judge Preston consider awarding him with the position of Judge Executive, as he did not do when he came to the conclusion at the end of the court case here in McGoffin County. Montgomery's bond was set by the judge in the amount of $1,000, as was the bond that has also since been filed on behalf of the Board of Elections, Renee Shepard in her capacity as County Clerk, Justin Williams, Susie Salyer, and Carson, member, Carson Montgomery, my apologies, as members of the Board of Elections. They, too, also had to fill out a motion to set bond and order certification certification of record, that too in the amount of $1,000. However, Judge Preston ordered that Judge Harden would have to fill out a bond in the amount of $80,000, which I believe was set at that amount based on it being similar to the annual salary for that position. And as you can see, Judge Charles Harden did fill out the proper paperwork today for that bond, uh, and that will allow him, from what we understand, to either remain as judge executive or take the judge executive seat back as it was deemed vacant. That matter still up for debate as to whether or not Kentucky law indicates that he was actually vacated from the office or per some legal rulings may have actually been able to stay there the entire time. Once again, it is just a matter of legal opinion. But he has filed the bond that will certainly and officially allow him to stay as McGoffin County Judge Executive pending his appeal of the ruling handed down by Judge Preston. As for that appeals process, I am told that it is expected that the appellate court will expedite the matter and in 14 to maybe 30 days at most schedule a briefing time for the case to be heard. And lastly, on the matter this Thursday, I spoke with Judge Harden just moments before sitting down behind the desk during a telephone conversation during which he issued the following statement to us here at Your News Today. He says, quote, Some debate exists among state officials and legal opinion as to whether or not the office was ever vacant. He says that he did fill out his bond today, which I just reported, and that questions would be answered in due time. He considers himself the official judge executive of McGoffin County with all the responsibility and authorities of that office and will conduct himself as such until notified by a higher authority. He says also that he appreciates the patience of McGoffin County citizens at this time and says it's time to let the case work its way through the legal system. He also added at the end that this is the time that we should all pull together, chill out, and lighten up on one another. With that said, tonight's community calendar starts right now, and it's all, as always, it's brought to you by McGoffin Farm Bureau.
And it's full of birthday wishes. A 14th birthday to Mason House. Love, Mamma, Geneva, and brother Colton. Happy 14th to Mason House, everybody. Join me in saying happy birthday. And he's not the only one celebrating birthdays tonight on the program. I've got a happy birthday wish to Laura Ann Ball on her 45th birthday today from Nancy, Mitchell, Sammy, Tasha, and friends and family. And I've got another birthday. You know what? This was supposed to be for tomorrow. I'm going to put it on tonight. It came with this one. It says, also happy 16th birthday to Timothy Ball. He'll be sweet 16 tomorrow from Dad, Tasha, Nancy, and a whole lot of family and friends. He's 15 for just a little while longer. Timothy Ball, happy birthday to you. And I know I'm getting way ahead of myself with the Easter lilies in the background, but man, I'm ready. There's a Kentucky Tree Re- Recovery Campaign event set for McGoffin County for this Saturday. It's an effort between the Kentucky Division of Forestry and the Arbor Day Foundation and other partners to restore trees to counties destroyed by the March 2012 tornadoes. Of course, all this comes just in lieu of what will be the third anniversary on Monday. So let me back that up there so I can go into it a little bit more. The McGoffin County Cooperative Extension Office is hosting the event. It's rain or shine, wear appropriate clothes because you might get muddy boots and gloves suggested and bring your own shovel. They're going to have some planting supplies on hand. It's going to be this Saturday from 10 till 2 at the McGoffin County Extension Office, a Kentucky tree recovery campaign for everyone and they're also taking fruit and vegetable plant orders until march the 20th at the extension office and the next grafting rootstock class is going to be this coming wednesday the fourth at noon that's hard to believe march is going to be here next week indeed it is call your mcgoffin county extension service if you have any questions 349-3216 either to order your fruit and vegetable plants or to learn more about the grafting rootstock classes mcgoffin county it's time to start thinking about baseball and softball mcgoffin youth baseball and softball signups the first round of a few is going to be held this saturday for two hours noon till two at your sagersville dairy queen find them on facebook for more information if you need to between now and then baseball around the corner can't wait and if you want to get your kids signed up you can do so saturday beginning at noon at your sagersville dairy queen and a reminder from a report that we ran just um this week last night or not before last the days are running together you have a special invitation to join them at saint luke's catholic church this sunday march the 1st between two and four for an open house and reception there will be a prayer of dedication at two o'clock and a reception will follow the open house and a reception and open house will follow. They hope you'll join them as they dedicate their new facility and institution to better serve God and McGoffin County. And the Sagersville Kiwanis says they're looking for citizen and group of the year nominations. If you've got one or a couple, mail them to Kiwanis, Post Office Box 62 here in Sagersville, 41465. They're citizen and group of the year nominations. You can nominate someone in a group, two different nominations, Anyone you so choose, mail them to Kiwanis. They, of course, will make their selection, as they do every year. Very soon, we'll be there to cover the ceremony. And I'm always here for your calendar announcements, birthdays, anniversaries, and the like. They're always free. And this is, as always, how you get them on the show. As we turn to obituaries for the area, 82-year-old Alma Bailey Arnett of Sagersville will be laid to rest during services, which start Saturday at 1. She survived by her husband Aaron, sons David Allen and Matthew Knoll, and daughter Aretta Arnett. Visitation is this evening, all day tomorrow, and prior to services. Once again, they'll start Saturday at 1 o'clock, all of which from the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Burial will be thereafter at the Mann Cemetery at Bloomington in McGoffin County. And services are also going to be held for 66-year-old Kenneth Ray Adams of Burton Fork Road, who passed away on the 25th, yesterday's date, the son of the late John and John Adams and Faye Imogene Conley. He's survived by two brothers and a sister. Visitation starts after 2 o'clock tomorrow, all day Saturday, and then up until services Sunday afternoon at 2, all of which visitation and services from the State Road United Baptist Church. Burial will be held at the Family Cemetery at Falcon. I don't have the funeral service, funeral home in charge of services and arrangements listed here. I will have that for you tomorrow. My apologies. 
and we still have services to be announced for Lahoma Man, 96 of Waynesville, Ohio, formerly of McGoffin County, who passed away on Wednesday. Arrangements are incomplete, but to be announced soon by the McGoffin County Funeral Home. Now let's get caught up on tournament time. I know I mentioned it two or three times that I was in a rush to get out of here before tip-off or just in time for tip-off of the boys' matchup in the 57th District Tournament over at Johnson Central last night for the Johnson Central Golden Eagles and the McGoffin County Hornets. I did not make it, try as I might. By the time I got in there, the first quarter was winding down. Johnson Central was 4 of 5 from the three-point range and already had McGoffin County on the ropes. Big baskets like this big three from Central's Josh Hitchcock. Outnumbered big shots like a big three by McGoffin County's own Jaron Lovely from over in the side. Central regains the ball in the first half. Tyler back works his way under 4-2. And a steal by Hitchcock just soon thereafter. Piles on another bucket. The first quarter ended with Johnson Central up 28-10 over McGoffin County. And this one doesn't count, but you got to put it on the tube. Dalton Atkins, he's going to get the ball. He's going to lob one up to Kyle Gullett. And like I said, it didn't count, but it made the highlights. The Hornets didn't make good on a bunch of runs, but they never got close enough to really threaten Johnson Central. Final score, 64 McGoffa County, 84 Johnson Central. That ends the Hornets' season without a trip to regional play. 9-18 on the season, one win, six losses in district action. This was an improvement. They actually fell to by 40 to Johnson Central during the last matchup. They clearly had it out to improve, and they certainly did. Wrapping up a real good season for the Hornets at 9-18. and 18. Johnson Central, however, will move on into the championship round. Win or lose, they're also guaranteed to go on into regional play. And right now they're sitting on a 20-8 and eight record after that win over McGoffin County. And 5-2 and two in district play. That also puts them versing Sheldon Clark, who was the other winner in the boys' game last night. Tip off for the championship round in the boys' game, 7-30. And Sheldon Clark made it to the championship round after defeating the Paintsville Tigers. That's a misprint on your screen. The final score was actually Paintsville 45, Sheldon Clark 81 in a big route to put them into the championship game. Win or lose, they too will be going on to the regional tournament at the Pikeville Exposition Center next week. We'll be taking you there as well. So the 57th District Championship games are as follows. The boys, the Eagles at 20-8, and eight, the Cardinals at 21-5. and five. Tip off Friday night at 7.30. And another Johnson Central Sheldon Clark matchup. The Lady Eagles 17 and 11, Lady Cards 15 and 9. That tips off tonight at 7:30. And that leaves me with just a second to put the lid on this one with your Licking Valley RECC forecast. I hit 42 degrees today. The forecast says we'll hit 13 tonight, mostly cloudy skies, and we'll also see winds from the north northwest around six miles per hour. Puts wind chills in the single digits, mostly cloudy skies, and like I referred to at the top of the program, a 30% chance of some scattered snow showers, mainly between 9 and 1 in the morning, uh, and then maybe some scattered flurries in the morning before, say, 8 a.m. Tomorrow, that Arctic air will grab hold, and we will not make it anywhere close to freezing. In fact, we'll be lucky to break the 20-degree mark, 21 expected for your Friday with a low tomorrow night of 5. Back down into the single digits we go. A.M. flurries in the morning. We'll see some sunshine. Won't warm much up. Partly cloudy skies late. For your weekend, we're still talking about Saturday partly sunny and 34. And then Sunday, some precipitation with a 45-degree day. Even though we fall back to 42 on Monday, I've got the 50s Tuesday and Wednesday before it all goes back downhill. But for now, that's my time. Thank you all for being a part of it. We'll see you back here tomorrow night for more of your news today.